Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another frequently asked question, actually questions. This is gonna cover two questions. And it's about what I do with my jars in food stores. Now a lot of times people will see me put photos like the couple I'm gonna show back to back right here in my videos. And that is what stirs up the questions about stacking and the rings and do I leave them on? So I'm going to answer these questions today. So a lot of people ask, do you leave the rings on your jars? Because you'll see in those pictures there that some of the jars you can see the tops of have the rings on, but the ones you can't see the tops of don't have the rings on. So the answer actually is no, I don't leave the rings on the jars ever. Once all the jars have been properly sealed, all of the rings come off. They all get washed and then allowed to dry thoroughly. And for some jars, yes, I do put the rings back on. And I'm going to explain why I do that. And I'm also going to be explaining how I put them back on because that's going to play a big part in to why you should not leave the rings on or put them back on tightly if you're going to put them on. Now, there's two problems that can come into play if you leave the rings on your jar. So if you leave them on there and you haven't washed and dried them yet, just that alone, two things can happen. The, the rings can rust on the inside over time and that can make it really hard to impossible to open the jar or if it's something like jam or anything that's sticky you know like uh maybe canned peaches anything that might have a syrup of any kind in it it that's going to come out and while in the canning process some of that's going to leach out of the jars and get along the inside of the ring and that can cause a very sticky residue which will also pretty much cement the rings to the jars. This is why it is very important to remove the rings, all of them, no matter what it is, no matter how you plan on storing them and washing them very well and making sure if you're going to put them back on like I do with some of my jars, that they are completely dry, both the rings and the jars themselves. Of course, you have to wash the jars too. So everything gets washed. Once, once all this stuff sealed, which every jar did, tattlers and metal lids alike, I take all the jars over to the sink, take all the rings off, wash both in the soap and water. Now let's move on to the stacking part. Let me say this first. The whole taboo on stacking your jars, nobody even knows where that idea even originated from. Now I'm gonna put a link down below to the National Center for Home Food Preservation and that particular link will take you to a section where it talks about stacking jars and how to do it properly. Now I had never even visited that site before when I came up with my own method of stacking jars. It was just a matter of thinking things through. Some of the issues you can have with stacking your jars, if you're stacking them directly on top of each other like this, especially if you go too many too high, is the bottom jars that can cause a lot of weight on that lid and also, I mean, they recommend you, you don't go higher than too high. And if it gets jostled at all, it can cause the bottom one to become unsealed. That can, it can really affect the integrity of the seal. So now here comes into play why I put the rings back on some of the jars. Now I'm going to show you an image again. If you look closely, you will see that on the jars that have rings on them, I have either a a board in between them or even just a chunk of cardboard. What that does is help displace the weight. Now the jars on top of those you can't see the top of because it's covered up by the, the bottom rim of the shelf above it and those jars do not have any rings on them. I leave those ones off. Oh I forgot to cover the other issue about leaving the rings on. Here's the other problem if you leave the rings on or put them back on too tightly is that if your jar while in food storage loses its seal 
uh, though I've never actually heard of this happening, this is what is said to happen, is that the lid can come unsealed, but the tight band on there can cause the jar to reseal again. I would believe that would be if there was a change of temperature in the room, which is also why it's important to always keep your jars in a room that keeps a consistent temperature on a cooler level. So a lot of people will use root cellars, basements, and special pantries where they don't heat like we do. Anyway, the, if the jar reseals and botulism happened to have got in there before the jar seals, reseals itself, botulism has no flavor or no smell and you won't see any visible evidence of it being in there. But by making sure that the jar, if it comes unsealed and you're unaware of it, can get oxygen in there, then mold will grow on top. And that way you'll know for certain that the jar has lost its seal and then you need to dump the contents. Now coming back to putting the bands back on the jar, let me show you how I do it first and then I'm going to explain why. So on certain jars, I put the bands back on like that. Now that's not going to be visible. You won't be able to tell by looking at those photos. But basically the rings are just sitting on the jar like that. Then when I go to place a board or cardboard or whatever over the top and then stack the jars on top of that, what is going to happen is the boards, the cardboard is going to help displace the weight a little bit as well as causing it to go on the band not directly on the lid itself and then the band the weight is actually going on the threading of the jar itself so that's not going to affect the integrity of the lid itself now i have never lost a seal on a jar using this method the only time i lost seals on jars were for two reasons one back when we used to store all my canned goods out in our shop where the temperature changes it can it can get down to below freezing in the winter time and get hot in the summer and those heat fluctuations can cause your lids to lose their seals and also because on my jams i was still doing i had used the newer lids where they changed everything and i was still using the old-fashioned method of inverting the jars for jams only and for about five to ten minutes and then turning them over until they seal that's the old-fashioned method that used to work that worked great on the older lids before they changed the design on it now that method can still work but it doesn't always so I now always process my jams and the syrups for 10 minutes in a hot water bath counter after doing that so now the problem I'm having though is I'm out of shelf space for my canned goods. I filled up all of my shelves and now I'm having to resort to the boxes that Patrick made me several years ago. Now these boxes, when I put the jars in there, mostly they were meant for holding my empty jars because a lot of times I get jars at garage sales and I don't have boxes with them. Even the pint sized jars like this actually stick above the the top of the box. So by carefully setting those bands on there, I might turn them a little bit if it's going to sit cockeyed, but I still want to make sure it's lifted above the lid. All right, I didn't think you needed to watch me putting the bands on every single jar, so I just went ahead and skipped all that part for you. So now I've got the jars in the, this one's a little cockeyed, let me straighten that out, in the box. So now what I can do is I can take the next box. I have quite a few of these, Patrick. I have some. Right now I have one that's full of soup and green beans that I had canned about a month or so ago. And, you know, again, because I ran out of space on my shelves. And so now I'm ready to do the next box. Now I can set these ones just in there like that if this box is going to go on top. However, I will be stacking other lighter weight boxes on top of this because I use one of these boxes for storing some of my lids. The rings and the, the rubber gaskets for the Tatler lids all get stored on, a, on bungee cords that I hang across my shelves. So that's going to go on top. So I'll also be putting the bands back on to these and then I'll stack the jars. And now I've got more space for stacking jars and I can go 
up quite a ways with that as long as I'm careful with how much weight's really going on there. Again, that link will say not to go more than uh, too high on top of that. However, because of the way I'm doing it, I feel pretty confident I could go higher than that and be safe because the bands are going to help add that extra layer of protection so not so much weight is going directly onto the lid itself. So that's how I do it. I know a lot of people kind of freak out. Some people are just curious because they've heard this somewhere, this whole idea oh you should never stack your jars well yes you can it's just there's a way to do it if you're careful and you practice some of these other methods like i'm showing you here and again go check out that link that i'll put in the description box down below don't forget to click on either show more which will be right below my channel name over here or if you're on a smart device like your phone or whatever go over here you should be able to see a little gray triangle pointed downwards when you click on that that'll open up the description box and so then you can see all the links because I'm also going to put a link to the playlist of frequently asked questions and these are going to be questions about all kinds of things but a lot of them have to do with uh, vinegar making home canning dehydrating things like that and whether you're totally new to home preservation or you've been doing it for 30 40 50 years you may find some interesting ideas that might be new and different to you that you might want to implement according to your situation because just like the stacking of the jars and doing this kind of stuff uh, for those people who don't have a shelf for every single row of jar and they're limited on space this is one way you can save space okay well I hope you're finding this series helpful and if you got any more questions go ahead and ask them because I'm gonna keep pumping out these FAQ videos as the questions come in so I can always have a video to link people back to as these questions get repeated down the road okay well thanks for watching take care and God bless